Yo, uh, I really enjoyed Resident Evil Village a whole lot, but before we really talk about that, you gotta go back to talk about Resident Evil 7, which is more or less a self-reboot of the series, and um, I don't think a lot of the fans were particularly happy with it, or they didn't really give it a time of day, because, you know, it was a freaking bunch of hillbillies, and it was like, oh, this is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this isn't uh, Raccoon City for the 40 billion of time. And so they gravitated more to Remake 2 or Remake 3. I mean, they didn't give um, 7. It's uh, Just Do's. It should have been played. Uh, but not too many people played it. Um, I, for one, enjoyed it for the most part. I thought that while the bosses and the bakers and um, that whole setting was pretty awesome. I loved... Um, it really felt like playing a Resident Evil as far as the gameplay was concerned. It's just in first person. Um, I thought that the mundane day-to-day -day combat with the mold creatures was um that was the weakest point of the game and you know that's supposed to be you know your your boss moments are supposed to be something that you work towards to um it's supposed to be in the majority of the game um so i think that you know it's more of a, it didn't follow a typical game structure which i think i ended up hurting it or maybe the, you know well it's good as the bosses were like jack baker and stuff like that um the mode sucked and village does a whole hell of a lot to alleviate that and so um while the lichens and the little zombies aren't super amazing enemies um they're a hell of a lot better than the mold and there's a lot of combat going on um there's it, it seems to be more fleshed out it's a bigger game as far as like the amount of area you travel um so some some people were playing it through it on normal they're being in about eight hours it's about the same amount of time that seven takes i felt that uh i should play on hardcore uh, I didn't play 7 on Hardcore, but I definitely want to play this one on Hardcore. Um, and that's the way to play if you're a veteran of the series. Hardcore is the way to play in between scrounging up ammos and dying a bunch. And just, you know, abusing the merchant as far as, like, you know, buying upgrades and stuff. Like, oh, I fire up, you know, shoot all the bullets out of my gun and go to the merchant and buy the clip. I'll get all the bullets in the clip for, for you know, for free kind of. And then it took me 19 damn hours to beat the game. And so, uh... There's a lot of here. There's a hell of a lot here. Um, playing on a hardcore is what you want to do if you're decent at video games. Um, that's where it should be. I felt that uh, there was a particular point when you're at the very beginning that's disproportionately hard compared to the rest. Uh, where you don't have much to going on. You're kind of the one of the first times you really get to play. You're out of the tutorial and you got to fight these. You got to survive. You got these werewolf assholes. Pretty rough. Um... The way to do it was to hide between the houses, honestly. Instead of trying to outrun them out in the street, you would just get your ass kicked. But the um, the village part of the game's really convoluted. Is But you have a nice map. You can use to look through. And, and, and it, kind of, it becomes like a hub for the rest of the area where, you know, you've got four main it's, it, enemies or lords or whatever. Freaking new family members. And you got to go through and kick their asses one by one. With the uh, village being the hub, and every time you go and you take out somebody like Lady Dishimitsu or whatever her name is, you'll come back and there's a lot of shit that's been changed in the village, or you have keys and stuff you'd be able to do and get to things that you couldn't get to before. And so it's just fun and how that happens. It's a, it's not really an open world game, but there's aspects of open world, back travel and stuff like that. It's handled fairly well, um, and it's just... It really is Resident Evil in first person, and um, I think that this will be what um, a lot of fans if they didn't really give seven in focus this would be the one that should bring them back hopefully enough um tons of guns tons of types of enemies and just the bosses are freaking pretty damn good you know there's there's more than just lady what's her fat ass here um but you know that's what people were focused on i mean whatever the fuck you tote your boat she's just a damn as eddie would say she's just a female tyrant and you know she chases you around and shit um but I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun, and there was a lot of balance here. There was a lot of game day to here. There's enough um, things to change up. They change up, a, you know, um, each little area has its own kind of theme or whatever it does. And uh, like the house area where you're, it's more of a puzzle based. Um, the ghost house or whatever. Fun as shit. I love, I love the hell of it. Um, I, this is the first game I played really through on my new PC rig where I got ray tracing and freaking HDR and all that shit. So it's kind of like my first kind of, you know, air quotation, a next gen experience or whatever. Dude, this is a rock solid performance on freaking PC 
on the RE engine is amazing and um, shit, I have a, a 3070, uh, RTS 3070 and it just, the freaking performance was amazing. I played in 1080p, never dropped 100, below 120 frames with all that shit on. Freaking fast as fuck and it's this thing might run on a potato. I, I don't know. I'm hearing people, you know, having a lot of success running it. No glitches, no freezes, no nothing hardly besides one time where I pressed window out. I windowed out and it came back and it was kind of um, jerky. Just reloaded the save point and it was good. Outstanding performance on a PC port. So Capcom guys to be commended there. Um, freaking awesome. Now... The, well, let's go talk about the post game first. There's definitely, um, there's like a difficulty kind of like Madhouse from Resident Evil 7. It's meant to be played with your post game equipment. So as you're playing through and you're beating and you're upgrading stuff, all of your crap carries over to the next gameplay, uh, what next difficulty, and you can pick it again. So if you wanted to go through easy twice, or you know, if you want to play hardcore and then drop down the easy, you know, it's how you could do in your next game. All your shit carries over. You keep upgrading it and you'll get what's. I think it's called challenge points, which it heck can unlock more post-game content. So, like, um, if you fully upgrade a gun in your in your story, you know you could go through and uh, would use these challenge points to get unlimited ammo on it. It it helps give um, some replay value to it because uh, honestly, having played through a little bit of mercenaries, not too much. That's what I'm showing here. The mercenaries seems to be kind of shitty, uh, honestly. Um, it looks like um, there's almost. I went through two. I thought I think there's only like four areas. Maybe it's five. I went through the first two areas, and there's almost like no challenge. Um, honestly, it's like get get the gun, do the most damage as you can, and try to chase down the enemies. Um, which you know, it's ne there's not too much getting overwhelmed like the way uh, Resident Evil Five or Six would be. And uh, I don't think Mercenaries is too hot. Honestly, um, I think they kind of fucked it up. Um, Maybe it's just the first person combat. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it isn't where it needs to be. As far as, you know, the, all the cool... It has combos and shit, but it's nowhere near as cool as, like, say, um, 5 or 6. Where you would be encouraged to do melee combat to try to build up your combos. Like, oh, we'll shoot the guy on the toenail and then go around and, you know, freaking suplex his ass. And then that's here. It looks like it's just try to get kill as fast as possible. Um, lacking. Lacking is... And I felt... Um, disappointed honestly but uh, honestly the, the the single player helps catch up for that and of course with you know if you're lacking in the multiplayer honestly i don't think that mercenaries is going to be that much of a damn play mode anyway so there's supposed to be some game that comes with it called reverse it this motherfucking game ain't looks like shit and it ain't out yet i'm not really gonna look or worry about that thankfully Unlike, say, Resident Evil 3 Remake, you didn't feel... It doesn't feel like... Well, Resident Evil 3 Remake, 3, 3 Remake had an um, extra game called, called Resistance, which honestly looks like shit. I never played it. But you felt like they tacked that shit on there to try to get a complete, you know, $60 or $70 experience. I don't feel that here. Your, your single player alone is going to give you a complete experience. Um, just play this shit on the difficulty is appropriate for you. Don't play that shit on casual. You're going to go through it too fast. And I loved going through, having to worry about my ammo, but not like to a panic style that you had to do on when you're playing Remake 2 Hardcore. Uh, but I still would go through and look under every nook and cranny. Me and Eddie would, were, you know, playing it together and um, trying to find all the little secrets in the area to try to turn the map, the red areas of the map, into the blue. There's a ton of shit, a ton of treasure, ton, ton, ton of stuff, and... You know, this merchant bastard just will take all of your money. And you still won't have enough money when you play through the game to get everything. At least I don't think you would. Um, so it's designed to be played through one at once. And gosh, it was this is great. So if you looked over Resident Evil 7, you shouldn't have. But if you did that, then come back to this one. And everybody's talking about, oh, this is Resident Evil 4. Blah, 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 blah. There's points of it that is Resident Evil 4 as far as your merchants and the way your inventory goes. Um, but it, it, this really is its own damn thing. And so um, you should definitely give this a run, especially if you've been, you know, out on the series. I know that Resident Evil 3 Remake wasn't too hot. Uh, it was merely okay, which isn't 
right for, uh, you know, it's not what the main line Resident Evil shouldn't be. They should be freaking awesome experiences. This one redeems itself, um, and it sets up, honestly, for Resident Evil 9. I'm not going to get any spoilers, but there will be a Resident Evil... Oh, of course there will be a Resident Evil 9, but it seems it's going to go on to this story. It's going to, you know, seem to finish up, I don't know, the Ethan trilogy or whatever the fuck it is. And besides that, Ethan's the boring as fuck character. He's like an insert character for the player. Not interesting at all. Um, don't expect too much Chris from this game. It's still largely its own story. Uh, and and it's it, they try to tack on what your Resident Evil lore at the end. But um, you could definitely play through Resident Evil 8 without it, needing to play through 7. Honestly, I think you should play through 7 first. But you don't need to as far as story. It'll, it'll help you. It'll... There's a little references is there, but it's not too much there. But um, give this a run. It's worth full price. Um, I hear that the performance on the Xbox Series X is awesome, but the PC version is the way to play these RE Engine games if you have a nice PC. So, Bryant, love the gameplay. It was freaking great. We got one Paul up there. Big Kitty, she felt the fucking graphics, the frame rate, and all that shit. And, you know, look at the world, the nooks and crannies, looking for the shit. The ray tracing was great. HDR is dark as fuck, but, you know, Big Kitty's throwing her hands up there. So we got two paws going. An easy recommend, and maybe on for my list of game of the year, so, of 2021. Um, but thanks, like, subscribe, and all that dumb shit. Thanks, Bob.